because if you don't say what's on your chest like literally say it with your chest say what's on your mind with your chest you neglect your feelings and you subconsciously tell yourself that what you are feeling is not important what's good everybody it's your girl amanda speaks and i'm coming back to you with another video what's good mandy come on so first of all if you're new to my channel you haven't heard about amanda speaks you haven't heard about mandy squad I know where you've been at, I don't know what's going on, but if you want to be a part of this amazing family, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button beside it, and don't miss any further notifications. So without further ado, let's hop into this video. um I want to talk about accepting the apology and I don't know where your mind went I don't know what the first thing that popped up to your head but what I'm talking about are for persons who they easily just brush off things I'm talking about persons who no matter how much time they've been wronged or how many times they feel offended by something they are quick to be like it's okay it's fine don't worry about it it didn't affect me that much or I'm good I'm good you know I'm okay I'm, I'm cool I'm talking about those persons who they honestly just they don't process things in the emotion it what? they don't process things in at the same time but what happens is that they overthink the scenario after it has happened they think about the what ifs and they probably should have done it this way or you know I wonder if that person even knows that this that and the third really affected me to this um, extent to this extent I'm talking about those persons who they're quick to accept your apology but not so quick to tell you how they actually feel and to actually put boundaries in place I'm talking about those persons who they are the kindest persons they're sweethearts they want to take care of you they want the best for you but at the end of the day they treat themselves very horribly like they don't treat themselves as how they treat other persons they don't take care of themselves as how they take care of other persons not because they don't want to but maybe they find it hard to so the first point i have here for accepting the apology is one if you don't accept the apology you won't come into agreement that you've actually been wronged and when you come into agreement to realize that I've actually been wronged I've actually been offended by this person you also acknowledge the fact that they recognize that they were wrong as well especially if they identify parts of where they were actually wrong you come into agreement with that and what happens is that from that agreement, you know, can say what's on your chest. The issue is when you simply just accept it, but don't say what's on your chest. What you're doing is neglecting your feelings. You're basically telling them that it's okay to abuse you. It's okay to take you for granted because you're not sharing your emotions with them. So they feel as though as long as they apologize, you're quick to forgive them. And while that might not be the case internally for you, you have not verbalized what has been affecting you or how you actually felt. So what happens is that you're giving them the impression that it's okay to do what they want because after a while and as long as they come back and say that they're sorry, and people can be very cunning and very manipulative. If they realize that you accept their apology much quicker when they identify the areas that they have wronged you in, they ensure that they pick out a part that they know they have wronged you in and say it in the apology just for you to accept it. You have to be careful because if you don't say what's on your chest, like literally say it with your chest, say what's on your mind with your chest, you neglect your feelings and you subconsciously tell yourself that what you are feeling is not important and how you feel is not important and the emotions you're carrying this burden that you're carrying is not important in a, and it does not have as high of a priority as another person's opinions as another person's apology as another person's decisions and actions 
you are neglecting yourself. And after a while, you won't even take yourself seriously. You won't even acknowledge or accept your own emotions because at the end of the day, you did not make yourself a priority. The second point I have is that you intensify the pain and the insecurity you may have been feeling in that moment. So what happens with persons who accept the apology but they don't really voice what's on their mind is that after the event has happened, they suffer and they're consumed with the what ifs and the I should have. So what if I had done this a different way? What if I had said this a different way? What if I had stopped them before they did that? Maybe I should have said it this way. Maybe I should have hurt her feelings a little more, hurt his feelings a little more. Maybe I should have gotten revenge. Maybe I should have, I should have, what if, what if. And it goes on and on. And I don't mean just the days after the event. I mean even months. I mean even years. Because you did not get to voice that feeling in the moment. You are suffering with the what is you're consumed and thinking that it may have just been your fault or it may have been you know something you did something you said and the truth is that we plague our minds with all of these questions not realizing that we will never get the answer because what happens as well is that a lot of us and i say us a lot of us will not go back to that person and say you know when this happened especially if years have passed it's hard to go back and say, yo, you know, in 2017, you did this in the month of July. Because <laughs> some of us, that is how much we know it has affected us when we can remember the, ex the exact date, the exact month, the exact year. It's not just the memory. When we can remember the exact time it happened, that's supposed to indicate to you how deeply it caught you. But a lot of us will not go back and say, you know, when you did this, it really, really made me feel this way. Because guess what? We feel that because a lot of time has passed, what will happen is that people will think and assume that we're only living in the past and we cannot grow and we've not evolved and we're being petty and we want revenge and so on and so forth. They will have, we feel as though they will have all the wrong assumptions about why we're coming to them with this issue. And they're going to think as though you really meant that bad are you or you really been living with this unforgiveness for so long. Like really? We feel as though if we go back, we're staking, we're staking, we're taking a step back and we're going back into that shell. We're going back into that person who we really never wanted to tap into again. Because that jumps into my next point. A lot of times we feel as though we're healed and we've matured and we've moved past something because we're not talking about it or because, you know, we're not acknowledging this and that and we're not seeing the person or... You know, we're even seeing them, but it doesn't feel so bitter. You have to be you have to be careful because we can confuse being healed with being numb. Not because you're not talking and you're not lashing out and you're not thinking about a thing does not mean that you've been healed from a thing. Because if something is supposed to trigger that right then and there, your subconscious will do it'll be like a, a switch. And something is going to trigger you and all of a sudden you're caught up in your feelings. All of a sudden you're aggravated. All of a sudden you're sad. All of a sudden you feel so bad. And you're like, what happened? When you become numb to a situation, what happens is that you just get accustomed to that environment. You get accustomed to that feeling. You get accustomed to that person. You have not really acknowledged and been healed from a thing you've not grown past it you've just become numb you're just here and that here place can be very dangerous because nothing is being resolved there nothing is being nothing is happening you're not getting out what you wanted to see a long time they're not um getting the clarity that they may have lacked but because we never asked them because we never said anything we didn't know that they didn't know the full extent to which they hurt you so everybody's just there. Everybody, and the funny thing is that the person will think that everything is okay and that they did their job and they apologize and you know they're moving forward when you're over here numb. Like numb numb. You have to be careful. And I remember talking in two of my videos that like, what are your walls doing and the unguarded heart. I don't remember which one it is that has what I'm about to say. But I remember saying in one of those videos that 
You can either have a wall where you block out everybody and literally you isolate yourself, which low key you're building a prison for yourself and nobody is able to come in, but also you're not able to get out. Or you can have a gate. You can choose who comes in and you can observe who comes in and you can let them leave or you can send them out, <laughs> you know? But it's a gate where you observe persons. You are identifying who you really want here in your space or who you really don't. And that's okay because that way, even if you're hurt, you willingly participated and you still gained something from it. Regardless, you learned something. You became a better person, you know. But from far, you're already observing them. Instead of somebody trying to break down your wall and bulldoze through your wall and you feel attacked and you feel anxiety when person are trying to get close to you, you can simply use a gate instead. Where you are observing that individual, you're constantly trying to get to know them and they're getting to know you. And if it don't work out, they can simply leave, you know? And you can also leave and come back versus being in a prison, being in a wall where nobody gets in and you don't get out. You're not growing. Your mindset and your perspective is not growing. It doesn't work like that. And you're literally just becoming numb. And sometimes we can feel as though we're always right. Because we're in this little bubble, we're in this little box, we're in this little numbness. We can feel that we're justified in any and everything that we do. And we low-key lock off our emotions. That's another point. The other thing I wanted to just say, I think it's on the same point, but it's fine. Is that... When we lock off our emotions and we lock off our heart, what happens is that we're making it harder for the person to come after that person. So the person who really wants to get to know us and has our best interest at heart, or really wants to be our friend and wants to care for us and wants to love us, it's hard for them because we have already numbed ourselves, we have already locked up our heart, locked up our emotions. We're not giving it to you and it feels like literally a war, like somebody's literally trying to tear something from you in order to get close to you and not everybody has that in them i ain't gonna lie not everybody has that in them and not everybody has the strength to fight not saying that you're not worth the fight but sometimes we make it harder for persons because we're not we're not actively trying to help them either while they're showing the effort and showing that they really are serious about being our friend or being our partner we, we're not actively trying to shed and to take off some of the burden for them we're making it extremely hard for them because like and we have this thing as like if you really love me you'll fight for me or if you really wanted me to be my friend or care for me or whatever you'd really push through and blah blah, blah. not everybody has it in them and sometimes we are the wall that we have are, is so thick that to get through will take decades to get through will take so much. And maybe that person just doesn't have it in them. Not saying that I didn't think you're worth it. And maybe we're even missing out on the opportunity to find that person that we've been longing for for so long. And this can be a friend. This can be somebody seasonal. This can be your partner. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we're blocking our own blessings because of the walls that we're building up. And they're so thick and so tall that persons are finding it so hard to get through. The next point I have here is accepting the apology does not mean that I'm accepting your behavior. Not because I've forgiven you for not, not because I've forgiven you for doing me dirty or offending me means that I'm going to automatically just say, okay, everything is dandy, everything is roses and daisies. No. What I'm going to do is set some boundaries now and we're going to try to understand each other. I'm going to tell you exactly why this hurt. I'm going to tell you how it hurt and i'm going to tell you that this can be resolved or you can try to at least do this differently maybe it was your tone maybe it was your words maybe it was who you were with maybe it was how you were you know acting with that person i'm going to tell you what hurt me and why it hurt me and if you actually care and you're mature enough we can come to a common uh, agreement but don't get it twisted, not because I accepted your apology means that I'm going to accept your behavior. Because if you do that shit again, if you do it again, I can't promise you that I'm going to accept it. And even if I don't, I can't promise you that I'm not going to step either. Because once I know my worth, I also know what I'm willing to put up with. And not because I put up with it once, me that I'm going to put up with it twice. 
if I know my worth, you cannot treat me any and any how. You cannot speak to me any and any how. If I know my worth, I will tell you straight up that this cannot work. That cannot work. And even I didn't have this at a point, what I really want to say is even though it might be scary in that moment to let what you have inside off of your chest, I would advise you to do it even though you're scared. For me, I know that sometimes I will get nervous and sometimes I may start to shake. You might hear it in my voice, you may see it in my hands when I'm speaking to somebody. But because I know what I'm talking about is something that I need to say, whether it is an important point or it is something that it's, it's hurting my heart, when I know that I need to say it, I'll do it anyway, though I am terrified. And I would encourage anybody to do that. Don't be disrespectful with it. I don't tolerate disrespect. I don't like it. And I don't think you have to be disrespectful to get your point across. Don't be disrespectful with what you have to say. But say it confidently. Say it even though you're scared. Say it with your chest. Know that you're saying this because you know your worth. You know how it's hurting you. You know that, especially if you want to continue with this relationship or this friendship, whatever it may be, say it. Because if you don't say it, they'll never know that that's how much it was hurting you. If you don't say, and some persons are very manipulative, as I've said, they will literally take a part that they know would have hurt you and they know you probably felt a way about it and include it in their apology just to make it seem as though they're being sincere. Say what you have to say anyway and ensure you get it off your chest so you don't live with the regrets and the what ifs and the I should have. Say it. Say it. Because you know what you bring to the table. You know how you're feeling. You know the emotions and the burden that you're carrying. And you know if you don't say it right now, it's going to get worse. And you might just make somebody else do it to you. Sometimes what we do is that we encounter the same situation over and over just with different persons because we would not acknowledge and we would not have we would not set a boundary and we would not have said what we needed to say at the beginning. So we encounter the same cycle over and over and over and over and we wonder why is this happening to me? You have not said it, I've not gotten it off your chest. Okay. So guys, this is all I have for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, ensure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me and it helps to spread my videos to those who really need it and really need to hear from me or hear just this word that, you know, the Lord has praised on my heart. <laughs> but really and truly hit that like button because it really helps to share my videos. As well as leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your perspective. I'd love to hear your key points that you chose from what I, whatever I just said. What what really resonated with you. You know, I'd love to hear it all. Because I look at your comments and I reply. I reply. I like. Because you know, you're my family. You're my online family. And I love you guys so much. As well as share with a friend. Share with a fam. Hello. We are growing, we're almost at 300 subscribers and it would be great if by the end of the month or starting next month we are at 300 subscribers so we know we move in, we move in, we grow in, hello, you know, <laughs> but share the friend, share the family, you really don't know who needs to hear this and who needs to be encouraged or who, who needs just this confirmation to actually say what they need to say off of their chest without apology and knowing that they have done what they need to do and they're giving what they need to give. You know, so y'all, yeah, your girl's back. And first of all, before I even end this video, thank you to everybody who tuned into the late night session with AS. I honestly think it was successful. I never knew you guys would have enjoyed it that much. I did get some feedback from some of you that you did enjoy the sessions and stuff. So if you really enjoyed it and you want us to do something like that more often, whether you know it's a whole new series or it's something that you want to see being continued just me talking about topics that you guys suggest then ensure to comment below hashtag lns i will honestly know exactly what you mean and also follow me on my social medias because that's where i i interact with you guys that is where i can involve you guys so until you know we get that community side on youtube when we reach our target goal but until then follow me on my social media so that when i put out like questions or topics that you want to talk about you guys can easily type in your topics and i'll see it and you know i got you so and if you just want to see more of me 
follow me on my Instagram at Amanda Speaks 876 and you know yeah I'll see you guys there and until the next video peace